What's up guys? We are here back to do Hard Knocks episode 3. Well before we get into all that, the podcast episode went up this morning on YouTube and anywhere else that you get a podcast, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, it's all up, all up and ready to go. Guys, we are halfway through Hard Knocks by this point, more than halfway technically. So there's five episodes in Hard Knocks season. We are on episode three. So we are almost done here. We will only have two more Hard Knocks videos. Sad. So, but the good thing is, is that when Hard Knocks ends, football season is starting. So we have two weeks until football season starts, which is crazy. So hopefully COVID does not get in the way of that and we can have a full football season because I am ready. I'm ready to watch some football. So let's get into this week's episode of Hard Knocks. So it starts off with this guy polishing footballs. Again, I don't really think it's um, that important, but he puts shaving cream on f the football and I get that it's supposed to clean it and polish it, make it look nice, but I was like, why is this man putting shaving cream on a football? But so that's kind of like the aesthetic that we're given in the beginning of this episode. And basically, the premise of this episode is that my Hydro Flask is in the frame. Sorry about that. So, the premise of this episode basically is we're starting to practice in pads, which is a really, really big deal in training camp because they've been training for the past two or three weeks with no pads on. And we hear some people making comments in the show that practicing without pads on is, it just sucks. It's not you playing football because you don't have pads on. So when you put the pads on, it makes it really something, you know, you have something to hit, you have something to practice on, you get more of the feel of what it's going to be like when you're playing football with the full gear on and everything like that. And then, this was also in the very, very beginning of the episode, but we cut back to it. There are a lot of Chargers offensive guys in the... I guess the film room or the meeting room, their coach is not happy with them. He is so pissed off at the fact that they're not blocking. Just because you're on offense doesn't mean that there's no blocking involved. So they're getting yelled at and it's just he's just throwing curse word after curse word after curse word. Which is what, something I love about Hard Knocks is that it is on HBO so they can throw every word out there. It's just fantastic. This is a good segue into who they want to talk about next, which is Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen is someone who blocks and that's what they love about him. And we cut to Anthony Lynn seeing it too. He's just like, if you don't block, you don't play for me. But he's like, but Keenan blocks. Keenan is a fantastic football player. And we get to see Keenan just dominating the field. Like he is so insanely good. He's so fast. He's so quick. He can juke so well. And in practice, he's been going head to head with a new guy who is not a rookie, but a new guy to the team, Chris Harris. Chris Harris used to play for the Denver Broncos, who they used to play twice a year. And, or they do play twice a year, but Chris Harris is now on the Chargers. So he and Keenan Allen have a lot of history with one another. And we see them going head to head and Keenan just keeps juking him. He keeps juking him and they keep kind of laughing about it. They're showing a lot of highlights from all the things that happened when they were playing against each other on different teams. It's a, it's a fun dynamic, I think. When you have that division team that you play twice a year and you're just like I need to beat them I need to beat them because if you don't beat them then you don't win the division almost like frenemies kind of thing is a fun little thing that they throw out there and I like it the Chargers and the Rams are going to be sharing a stadium we get to see the new SoFi Stadium the, the Rams make their way over there because they are going to be having a scrimmage this weekend which technically this weekend that just passed, they get to go and see this new beautiful stadium. Oh my god. It is stunning. The fact that nobody's gonna be allowed inside of it this year is gonna suck because the screen, so the screen on top is a circle. Like it goes like this. 
and there's like the screen on the inside there's like a screen on the outside like underneath like it just looks so pretty and they walk in and they're all like "Ooh, ah so nice everything like that it was really just like a really cool stadium then we move on to some other rookies that we've been following and we talked to well i don't know if we actually mentioned him in the videos but they've been talking about clay johnson a lot He's a rookie defensive guy and he has had the tendency to be messing up a little bit and he knows it and everybody knows it and he's made it a point to be like, yeah, that was me. I messed up. And it seems like he's struggling a little bit. Well, he is a seventh round draft pick, you know, right at the end there. But then we find out that Clay Johnson's father, excuse me, father is Kent Johnson. And his father used to be on the staff for NFL teams, including the Green Bay Packers. And the quarterback for the Green Bay Packers at the time that Kent Johnson was a staff member was Brett Favre. Brett Favre and Kent Johnson became very close friends and he was, Kent Johnson, was Brett Favre's best man at his wedding. That's so crazy. So when you're his best man at his wedding, obviously you are close friends. And we are now seeing a, not FaceTime, a Zoom call between Clay and his father, Ken, where, you know, they're just sitting there, just chit-chatting, doing their thing. And then who pops up in the little box on the bottom of the screen? But Brett Favre. Oh my God, it was Brett Favre. And he calls him Papa Favre. Could you imagine being able to call Brett Favre Papa Favre? It is blowing my mind. So, and then they show a picture of Brett Favre holding Clay Johnson as a child, like a football, throwing him, like if he was gonna throw him. It's so cool. It is very, very, very cool. So that was like a, a fun little tidbit that they threw together with the fact that Clay Johnson and Brett Favre have this connection and whatever. He even mentions to Brett Favre that he, is like, yeah, I mess up a lot and like all this stuff. And Brett Favre's like, just be yourself, do your thing. <laughs> so then we're moving on and someone that we, again, have barely spoken about in a hard knocks at all is Tyrod Taylor. I mean, we have talked about Justin Herbert for the past two episodes. I know that in the last video that I made, I was just gassing up Justin Herbert because, well, first of all, he's very good, but we have not really gotten to see like in the mix with Tyrod Taylor. We kind of see like a little bit of a, a history of Tyrod Taylor when he was on the Ravens, when they won the Super, Go the Super Bowl. And then we see him when he went to Buffalo to play for the Bills, where he was this, the quarterback that ended up breaking the Bills' streak of making the playoffs after God knows how many years. And then we see when he was on the Browns, the year that they drafted Baker Mayfield, and Tyrod got hurt and Baker came in, and Baker then stayed as their starting quarterback. Tyrod has been on a bit of a crazy wave here he has never really been in, stuck in one place he's never been so obviously when he was on the Ravens he wasn't starting he was back up to Joe Flacco Tyrod's really never had this steadiness of being a starting quarterback and having a team and to be honest I don't know if the Chargers are that for him either because odds are Justin Herbert is going to end up starting it's going to just keep happening to poor Tyrod so we get a little bit of glimpse of of his situation going on right now and to be honest I kind of forgot that he was on the all these other teams and what kind of effect that he had on them and the Bills and the Browns making it so that Baker's now their starting quarterback like what if Tyrod never got hurt and kept going like would Baker still be starting like who knows everything happens for a reason Tyrod just remember that okay then we move on to Melvin Ingram, who we find out has been holding out 
for a contract because of Joey Bosa's money that he got um, when we saw that in the first episode. He said that he's been going to practice. He's been going, he's been assisting, he's been doing his thing, but he's not practicing. And he will not put on pads until his contract is all situated and he is given this guaranteed money. We kind of see a little bit of um, a different side of Melvin Ingram when they talk about the fact that he has been in, kind of had a passion for music since he was like 19. And you kind of see him in the studio, like doing his thing. It's a, uh, it's, you kind of forget that football players are people and they do have a separate life and they have other hobbies other than football but seeing them do other things you're like when do you have time to do this so off season time i suppose but melvin ingram um has a, po a passion for music so that's something that maybe a lot of us didn't know about then we are um introduced to a quick little thing about a rookie named juju hughes his staple is the fact that he walks around with a toothpick in his mouth. Now, the first thing that I thought when I saw this guy running around with a toothpick in his mouth is he's going to swallow it. I don't know why he has a toothpick in his mouth. I don't know what it accomplishes. I don't know if it makes him feel better. I don't know why. But that was my first thought was like, this guy's practicing with a toothpick in his mouth. If somebody hits him wrong, he swallows it. If he falls, he swallows it. If he blocks somebody, he swallows it. Like, nothing good can come out of having a toothpick in your mouth. Um, and then jumping back to Melvin Ingram, they jump back to him really quick to say that he is now coming into practice because he's been guaranteed, I think, $14 million dollars. And we just see him go out and, and be Melvin Ingram and do these amazing things. And he's a, a bit of a leader on this team. And he's, you know, giving advice to the young guys and doing his thing. So we see that side of Melvin Ingram as well. We jump back to Chris Harris, who we were talking about earlier when he was going off with Keenan Allen. He obviously has moved from Denver to L.A., and they mentioned that his kids were still in Denver, so, or in Colorado, and his kids have now come and moved with him and his wife to LA. He has four girls, and they, each and, each and every one of them are so cute, and they're at the beach, and they have this beautiful sunset happening. They get these awesome shots of them playing in the sand, playing in the water, um, oh my god, it was so, it was so cute. All right, then we move on to our Rams scrimmage. So we see them, they're scrimmaging each other. So it's offense versus defense, showing off Aaron Donald stuff. And Dante Dion, who we've mentioned in the past, he is just this little ball of energy. He has got a lot of things to say. He's got a lot of running to do. He is just very hyper in the best way. And he was the one last year or last week when we were talking about it. He like was nervous. So he was like running all his roots and laughing. <laughs> he seems like a, like a promising aspect to this team. He is very skinny, but nobody's been cut yet. I believe next week are cuts 27 people are going to be cut at least from the chargers i'm not positive with the rams pretty sure they said the chargers but either way people are going to be start starting to get cut so these people that we're following like clay johnson and juju hughes and dante dion these guys might end up getting cut and like i said clay johnson and juju hughes they were in the developmental group i don't know what that means i guess <laughs> When they say like developmental group, I would say that they have potential, but they need to be developed and putting them in. So obviously with preseason not happening, they're not able to see how they react in game atmosphere. So Sean McVay put them in this developmental group where they are playing to see how things go. I'm, I'm nervous for Clay. I feel like they might cut him. I don't want them to. I kind of like him. <laughs> he seems to be trying really hard and that's what counts. 
So that's basically the entire episode, but I do want to mention two things from the credits, which were definitely worth mentioning. So they kind of show more bloopers when the credits are going down at the bottom and they're always really funny, but there were two this year, this week. There was one guy, they were doing stretches on the ground and they were doing sort of like a hip stretch and leaning their body forward and leaning their body back and everything like this. And just straight up, this guy goes, yeah, I don't think I could ever give birth. Sir! <laughs> what are you talking about? You can't give birth! And I literally looked up and I was like, did he just say he's never going to give birth? So, that's a fun little thing. And then the second thing was at the end, we are seeing this big guy who I don't know who it was. But he has his cup of, it looks like a milkshake, with his straw. And he's... And then the straw like pops out and he gets milkshake like a little on his face and he starts like looking around like did anybody see that he's like wiping it off his face wiping it off his face sipping it some more and then he finds the camera pointing at him and he goes <laughs> oh man it's so funny it's so good i love hard knocks so much that was basically the episode from this week. Thing, if you have not listened to the episode yet, I do mention it here, but I'll mention it here as well. There will be no new podcast episode next week, but I will be putting together a Hard Knocks video next week. So no podcast, but Hard Knocks video will be happening. So don't forget, and don't forget to listen to the podcast. It's, if you have been watching me just because of my Hard Knocks videos, I suggest listening to my podcast. It's equally as fun so thank you guys all for watching and i will see you all next week for hard knocks episode four bye